Hi, my name is Hubert Baumeister and I'm going to show you how to implement a RESTful service using the Jersey, Jersey uh, implementation of the uh, Java specification for RESTful services and to use Jersey also as a client to access the web service. So the first thing what we have to do is we have to create a web application and we call this web application student registration and uh, we actually change the context path to some sh shorter path because we want to have shorter URLs and that's about it, we don't have to change anything else. The problem after having created uh, the project is that uh, we have to tell the project that it has to use the Jersey API. Now this happens in the web XML file and we need to actually adapt this file. The most easiest way to adapt this file is actually to create a new RESTful web service from a pattern. Simple root resource is fine. We say next. We have to provide a path, a package. That is also fine, and uh, then we should not select this, so we deselect this, and what we want to have is this REST servlet adapter created in the web XML. So this has been done, and actually we can now immediately remove the web service, uh, the RESTful service generated here, and we can focus on the contents of the web XML part. This one now contains a servlet part, which contains a servlet adapter and it's based on the Jersey libraries or the reference implementation. Now, in this init param, we need to make sure that this value is uh, corresponding to the package we're using in um, uh, our RESTful service. However, we can actually also remove this section completely and then the engine will look in all the classes we supply whether there are RESTful services in there. Uh, in addition, we have the possibility to actually change the name of the URL to access resources uh, of that application, but we keep here uh, just the default value web resources. So then we create our first RESTful services and this is just a resource representing the institute on which student registration happens and we can actually get the name of the resource using the get operation and we can put a new name of the resource. Now we call this resource institute resource. It has to be in a package and now we can actually say here that we want to uh, access the institute resource under the path institute and when we uh, have a get operation on this resource then we want to execute this method which just returns the name of the institute and says it's just DT. Now we need to define in which packages these are from. These are from uh, Java extensions, web services, RESTful web services, and the same is for GET. So we save. We now the build is complete and we deploy. And when we can look at the Glassfish source that we have here uh, a web service deployed with or a web application deployed with student registration rest and by scanning for the root resources we have actually found one root resource which is institute resource. So <laughs> now we can actually uh, access this resource and we can actually easily go to the restful web service institute resource and test the resource URI which sends a GET request to the resource and opens a browser on this and we can actually see here we have here accessed our resource and that DTU was the result. 
Now look, when we look at the construction of the URL, we can see here the host. Then we can see here the context route that we have defined as R. Then we can see the part of the path for to the resources we have defined in the web XML file. And then we have uh, see the part of the resource institute which we have defined in our resource ourselves. So how are we going to use um, such a web service? First we create again a standard Java application project. We call this uh, student registration client. Now here we have to make sure that the library, the Jersey libraries are included. So we go to the library section and we add a library. And we scroll down to Jersey and that's it. So a new GAML test to test for test. So we test uh, institute institute resource to JUnit 4 framework okay and now we can actually try to access this to access this we first have to create a client and this is called uh, we call the create method of a client and uh, we look here at the code completion we add this from the Jersey library Comsun Jersey API client client API. From that we need to get a web resource and so we find resource and we can either provide a URI or a string. In our case we provide a string and that is the URL of our resource which is as we've seen before, as we've seen here in the browser, which is localhost as our web resource institute, we can actually copy this just so this is the resource we want to access and to get the information from the resource again here we add the package, it's also coming from the Jersey implementation and we actually say string result is if we on this resource call the get operation and what we have to provide here is what we expect as the type. So we expect uh, to read have a string returned so we provide as an argument the class of the string, so string class and then we know that the result will be a string. And of course we check that uh, the result is actually DTU We have forgotten the equal sign here. So we have now our test. And actually, so this one, if we run the test, we will see that it succeeded. And we can open the test result window so we can see that it succeeded. Now, if we use a TCP monitor, and the TCP monitor is, as usual, listening on uh, 80, 70, so we can actually see what the message is that are being exchanged. And we run the test file again. And we see here in the TCP monitor that we have one GET request. And the request was answered by OK. And the result was DTU. So the next step will be that we're actually testing the following that when on our resource uh, that we put we use the put method that we actually change the institute name. So this is test driven development so we have not yet created the implementation for this we just use it as uh, a failing test first. So the basic idea is we put this because we're going to reuse this. We could actually copy this in here but actually what we're doing this is we're doing this in the beginning 
and uh, making instance variables out of the client and the web resource because this is being reused all the time. What we want to do is we define like string expected and this is, let's give it the full name of the uh, ETU. What we want to do is we want to put the expected and then we want to assert that the expected one is equal to what we actually get when we use a get on the resource. And we have to provide the class that we expected to come out of this. So, and we also change the name. Uh, we uh, test the file, and here it fails with put returned a response of 405 method not allowed. So we need to then have to implement this. So in this case, we want to implement a put. And to put, we say, OK. And we want to now set the name. So we define the name. And in this case, we define the name as a static string, because the institute resource is created each time again when uh, the RESTful web service is called. So again, we have to import the package for put. So we have done this, and we should actually see that the application has been deployed. This means we can go back to the test, and then we run our test. And we will actually see that both tests are passed, because now I've put Dansk Techniske Universität as the name and this is the expected. However, when I run the test again, the test will fail and we will see that in get institute name, the name was DTU and uh, I expected DTU, but of course we have changed the name, so this name is wrong. One way to actually overcome this is to reset the resource. And we are doing this by using a before annotation in test, so each time a test is run, this method is run, and uh, we call it reset uh, institution name, institute name, and what will it do is it will on the resource add a path, and we call this the reset path, and we will actually put some value to the reset. Actually, the value that we put there is of no relevance, so this actually is a way of, uh, in a resource-based environment, to represent actions as resources. So the reset action is represented as a sub-resource of institute, and when we put something there, then we mean we execute the reset. So we add import here, and we run the tests, and of course the test will fail again, because the before methods are not there. And here we can see that this is the URL we were trying to access, localhost 8070, this is the context route, this is the resource route, this is the name of the resources institute, and that is the name of the method. Now, to define this, we actually define a path. And we say on this path, if we do a put, then we want to execute the reset institute name method, which is in our case does not take any argument, it would just resets the name to btu. Again, the project has been deployed, we can actually run our tests and now we run it once and we run it twice 